Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we'll be speaking about Manchester United winning 3 1 against West Ham United in the FA Cup fifth round. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Come on. Manchester United 3, West Ham 1. And a late comeback to send us through to the quarterfinal of the FA Cup, where we'll be facing Fulham at home on the 18th of March, I believe. So look out for that one. More Premier League opposition, of course. But before we get into the breakdown of this West Ham game, it's time for... What is it time for? Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. Welcome to the segment where we give you the question, and by the end of this episode, you input what you find to be the answer. Question of the day, ladies and gentlemen, and here is today's question of the day. Now. Manchester United are beaten in 13 games against Fulham in all competitions. That is our next opponent in the FA Cup. The question today is, when was the last time they were able to be triumphant against United? We'll take the year. Before the game, it was a really nice atmosphere. We celebrated a Carabao Cup win. Casemiro and Mary Earps winning some trophies at the FIFA Awards. I believe Casemiro was selected in the FIFA Men's World 11. Mary Earps, the FIFA Women's Best Goalkeeper for 2022. So congratulations to them both. David De Gea was also given a little trophy for him passing Peter Schmeichel in the all-time clean sheets at Manchester United. So big up to David De Gea once again. Now going into the game, Eric Ten Hag made six changes from the cup final. And opportunities were given to some of the players who may have not been currently in that start in 11 picture. So there were questions to ask potentially for Eric Ten Hag going into the future games. But the biggest question above all was how would those players look to go into business in trying to get Manchester United the victory? I think we started the game all right. The one thing that stood out to me was Marcel Sabitzer's shot. It was a half chance saved by Ariola from outside the box. It was a well-worked move to be fair and, and I was hoping there was more of that to come but everything seemed to slow down for Manchester United. Whereas West Ham were working their way into the game extremely quickly and were a constant threat on the counter-attack. Now, Mikel Antonio had a really good chance, 1v1 against David De Gea, and that was saved. David just stood his ground, got a strong right hand onto it. And there were a few other chances that just didn't go their way. No end product, and Manchester United, to be brutally honest, were lucky. You know, the tempo was so, we struggled to create chances and play the ball forwards. Quality on the ball wasn't there either, so the question was, how can we change for the second half to transform the team performance and uplift the home crowd? I think that is safe to say that when Casemiro stepped onto the pitch as a substitute in that second half, he provided a lot more defensively and offensively, but I'm focusing more so on going forwards because you could see that instantly he wanted to play through the lines, have a bit more ambition on the ball and suddenly our attacking players were not just picking up good positions but it were also being found especially in those central areas where West Ham more so in the first half but a little in the second set up to be a little narrow and prevent those easy passes through. Things seemed like they were on the upward trajectory. But that was before Saeed Ben Rama slapped the ball into the back of the net past David De Gea. What a goal it was. You just simply Brilliant. can't deny anything like that. But the controversy behind it was if the ball was still in play, which was in the lead up to goal, or whether it should have been a throw into Manchester United. The players seemed to lag out for a few seconds before being caught, which is still poor whether it was in or out, in my opinion. Exactly. You have to play to the whistle. That's what you're taught. That's what everybody says these days. Well, not even these days. As a kid, your coach is saying, play to the whistle. It doesn't matter what you believe. It matters what the referee believes in the end of the day. So let us know in the comments what you thought. Was it in or was a ball out of play? To me, that's up. But, and how I, 
It was like that Japan goal in the World Cup when they shot Germany. We would have to see multiple angles, but the rule states that the ball is out of play only if the whole of it has crossed the touchline on the ground or in the air. When we did conceive, there was continuity in the fact that we had to up our tempo and we did. Add a bit of urgency to the performance and as we committed numbers forward, West Ham were prepared to also look for that second goal. But thankfully, the comeback finally started. Naya Faguer from a corner kick unfortunately just heading the ball into his own net. Ariola also misread the trajectory of the ball itself but that didn't matter. Bad communication on their part but we don't care because the comeback is on. After Casemiro's offside goal, all of the frustrations leading up to this moment, the belief was lifted to sky high levels. Could Manchester United now find the winning goal? Two words, man. Alejandro Garnacho. We're heading into added time. Extra time looms and he says, hold my drink, Pep. I believe it was Vekors whose shot was deflected. Once it bounced out to him, immaculate touch and an even better finish. Curled past the keeper and a celebration to match. Ten Hag said before the game to Alejandro that now you have to impact the game as a starter. You've done it coming off the bench. But now it's time to impact the game in a different way. And he did that. Fred also grabbed himself a goal deep into added time after a defensive lapse in concentration from West Ham. Brutal on them the scoreline, but Manchester United took advantage of the opportunities. Veg Horst on the third goal, working hard until the very end, and Fred enters the box via a late run, side foot, night. Nice night. Welcome to CM's United Report. Thank you for watching the United Twins up to this point. The episode will continue in a moment's time, but I'm here to speak about one thing and one thing only, which is Mr. Marcus Rashford being nominated for the Premier League Player of the Month award in February. He scored five goals in four games, some wonderful performances in that time and has the opportunity to become only the second player in Premier League history to have three Player of the Month awards in one season. So let's get it done, ladies and gentlemen. I will drop the link in the description for the website you need in order to vote. So let's get it done. You know, I was just steeping. You say, how did them man corn us twice in a row? Nah, 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 nah. Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. Yo, DJ, me make a wheel up the clip, my man. Manchester United are beaten in 13 league games against Fulham in all competition. Hey. That is our next opponent in the FA Cup. The question today is, when was the last time they were able to be triumphant against United? We'll take the year. If you talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the tweet. Now back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Don't question for the time. Question time. Question time. So, how did everybody fare in this episode's question of the day? Without a further ado, let's get the answer on the screen, please, editor. Manchester United were last defeated by Fulham, in any competition, by the way, on the 19th of December 2009. Damn, that's a long time ago. That is, whoo. Fulham won 3-0 in the league with goals from Danny Murphy, mm -hmm. Bobby Zamora and Damian Duff at Craven Cottage. Remember those names? Mm. That was their second home win against the Red Devils in two seasons, having won the previous games by two goals to nil. So if you got the answer correct, I want to see those ones slapped in the chat in the comment section as well. 22's big up yourself if you got that one correct. But one thing you can't pat yourself on the back for, one thing you can't big yourself up for, is if once again, I'm going to be looking at those comments and I don't see answers. The answers that I'm expecting. And I'm not talking about incorrect answers. I'm talking about blank, 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 nothing there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've reached this part, of the video. Surely you, you would have wanted to find an answer, even if it's a guesstimation. Activate your mind, activate your brain. 
It's good brain training. Who remembers that DS game? Anyway, yeah, have an answer next time, please. Please, just, you know, participate. Do something. Anyway, Keep listen, big ups to everybody who's reached the end of the episode, by the way. Because not a lot of people do it. I think right now I saw something that CM showed me and it was like, people usually watch about a minute or a little above a minute of the video True. and then they dip out. So you're a real special person if you reach the end of the video. Type special one in the comments if you reach the end, ladies and gentlemen. But be sure to hit a like on the video. By the way, CM will be back for a Stay United watch along on Sunday for the Liverpool game. Come on. It's going to be very important. And like what CM said in the report, go and vote Marcus Rashford for player of the month, people. I drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in a...